Hey friends, in this video in statistics, what we're going to look at is a really, really important topic in statistics known as standard deviation. Okay, so the last few lessons we've been talking about measures of central tendency, histograms, bar graphs, you know, those things. But standard deviation is going to tell us something really, really important. What standard deviation is going to tell us is standard deviation is talking about how spread out our data is from the center or from the average. This is a really important thing to visualize when we're looking at data. Is our data close together or is it far apart? So standard deviation is a measure of the spread or dispersion of a set of data around the mean. The lower the standard deviation, what that means is it means all the data values are closer to the middle. The larger the standard deviation, the further away from the middle, from the data center it is, okay? So standard deviation is very sensitive to extreme values in data. It starts to give us a sense of, is our data close together or far apart? Now we have a new symbol for this. It's this guy. It almost looks like I wrote my six a little funny, but that's the Greek letter sigma. Okay. So you'll see that when we start looking in our formulas in this unit and we start looking in our calculator. So to show you how this data is spread out or how data can be spread out is if you look at here, we've got two different graphs. We've got scores on a test, say, and their frequency. So those histograms that we drew in the last lesson. So which graph is more spread out? Well, what I can tell is graph A, I've got scores going all the way from zero to six, whereas on graph B, they only go from one to five. So what I would say here then is I would say graph A is definitely more spread out. So what that means is this graph has a higher standard deviation because it's more spread out. The graph with the smaller standard deviation is graph B because more of the data is closer to the center or the middle, to the mean or to the average, right? So if I have a lower standard deviation, it means my data is more tightly grouped together. If my data is more spread out, I have a higher standard deviation. Okay, that's an important idea right there. So standard deviation is telling us how spread out our data is. All right, let's play around with this in a couple of examples. Make sure you've got your calculator with you. So a class was asked to guess the age of three celebrities after being shown their pictures. The table below represents their guesses. Find the mean and the standard deviation for each celebrity and use it to determine whose age was easiest or hardest to guess. Okay, now we definitely know how to find the mean doing it just ourselves algebraically, pen and paper, but uh, let's use our calculators for this, okay? So grab your calculator, please, and let's see how we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna pull up my calculator here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my main screen. And so remember where we enter statistics. We go stat, we go edit, and if there's anything in our list, we go up and we go clear, enter. Okay, now what we do is we input our data from our list. So for Betty White, the lovely, lovely Betty White, who I've been watching on TV since I was a little guy, so she's been around forever. She's a gem. Okay, all I do is I put in her data. Now it's really important when we're letting our calculator do the work for us here that we have to just take a second to make sure we get our data in correctly. Because say for instance here, this last person thought Betty White was 95, but if I only put nine, that's really going to skew my data results. So 95. Okay, so there it is. There's all the data values for Betty White. So what I'm going to do again to calculate things, I'm going to go stat again. I go over to calc and we're doing one variable stats. Okay, 
So you see right there, it says list L1. That's where I put my data. Good. Okay, so I just go enter, forget frequency list, enter. And here it is. So what this tells us is Betty White's average was 85.1. And down here, what I noticed, there's the average, right? And down here, there's sigma, okay, 7.3. Okay, so 85.1 and 7.3. Let's go write that down. So Betty White's average was 85.1 and her standard deviation was 7.3. Okay, first off, like what the heck does that mean? All right, what do these numbers mean? Well, we know what the average means. It means the average person thought her average age was 85.1. What the 7.3 means is it tells me how spread out her guesses were, okay? So there was a gap in her age or what people thought her age was by 7.3. Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you to hit pause on the video and I want you to go and find the average age and standard deviation for good old Sid, the kid Crosby and Johnny Depp. Okay, and then when you're done doing that, hit on pause and come back to the video. So hit pause, go put those in your calculator. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, friends, so hopefully you took the time to plug those into your calculator. And here's what I end up with. So I end up with for Sidney Crosby an average age 26.9 and standard deviation of 4.6, and Johnny Depp, average 43.8, and a standard deviation of 5.4. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, which celebrity was it easiest to guess for? So what the standard deviation tells me is it tells me how spread out my guesses were. So for Sidney Crosby, because he has the lower standard deviation, it means the guesses were more consistent, right? Everyone was within a smaller group of guesses. So he was the easiest to tell the age of. Good old Betty White over here, 7.3. That means the guesses were less consistent. They were kind of a little bit all over the map. It means that people couldn't tell her age. We had a couple of people who thought she was 95 and we had a couple of people that thought she was 68. So the smaller the standard deviation, the closer the guesses were together, which means the more consistent they were. The further, the larger the standard deviation, the further apart the guesses were, okay? So, that's how you use standard deviation to think about things in terms of consistency. How close are things grouped together? All right, what we wanna look at now is let's try this again, but now what I wanna look at on this one is I wanna look at a frequency table, which we did in the last, one of the last videos. So a survey was conducted to determine the number of hours per week that students were on their phones. If the mean usage for adults is six hours a week with a standard deviation of two hours, what does this tell us? Okay, the table below represents phone usage per week for students. Okay, so what we want to do here is, I mean, we could draw ourselves a histogram pretty easily, couldn't we? And that's what we did in one of our last lessons. Okay, so what does it tell us about the students and the adults? So again, the adults say they were on the phone six hours a week on average with a standard deviation of two. Okay, so what that tells me is the data, there's a bit of a spread, right? Some adults are using it eight hours a week, some are using it four hours a week. Okay, well, let's look at the students below and then we'll compare the two data sets. So what we're gonna do here to find the standard deviation for a frequency table is we're gonna put this into our calculator again. So grab your calculator. And when we go to put this into our calculator, so again, we go stat edit, and we clear out everything we've got. What we'll do this time, friends, is we've got two sets of data here. We got L1 and L2. We got one set of data, but we're measuring it as a frequency table. So what we do, is when we look at the hours, it was a range. It went from three to five. So when we put this into our calculator, we take 
the average of three to five. Remember when we drew our frequency polygon? So we pick the point in the middle. The next one was hours five to seven, so we put in six. The next one was hours seven to nine, so we put in eight. Next one was nine to 11, so we put in 10. And you can see the pattern that's going on here. We're going up by twos all the way up to 14. And now what we do is we put in the actual frequency. So we go eight, and then it was 12, 15, 20, 10, and four. Okay, so again, we have to put that frequency table in, in two lists, in L1 and L2. Okay, so now that we've got all of our data into our calculator, what we do now is we go back to stat, we go over to calc, and it's still one variable statistics. But what we need to do now is right here where it says frequency list. Well, our frequency was in L2. So if you notice, we on our calculator above all of our numbers down here, if you look at above one, there's L1 and above two, there's L2. So our list is in L1 and we want to get L2 as our frequency list, just like that. And then we go calc. And there we go. That's how we're going to find all of our information when we've got a frequency table. And so now you can see the standard deviation is 2.8. Okay, let's go take a peek at what we were working on here. And so we just want to write down, what do we know? Try that again. Okay, what do we know? Well, what we just found out was that the average for students was 8.7 hours. And the standard deviation was 2.8 hours. That's students. Adults is six hours a week with a standard deviation of two hours. So what do we know? We know that students on average spend more time on their phone. on average, but what does the standard deviation tell us? The standard deviation is higher than the adults data. It's 2.8 compared to two hours. So what it tells us is students are also more varied. They're more spread out in how they use their phones in their usage. Whereas adults seem to be more consistent, right? They're not as spread out. So there we go. So there's how we're going to get a frequency table into our calculator. All right. So what I want you to practice is using your calculator. Now, if when I was doing that, you had a TI-83 and you didn't have the screen that I had, don't worry about it. You still go and you click one var stats. But now what you need to do on one var stats is you go L1 comma L2 if you have a TI-83. Okay, because your screen looks a little different than the 84 or the newer versions. Okay, friends, I hope that helped. I'll see you in another lesson.